Okay, so we're recording. Hi, everybody. I'm Haley Evans, and I'm with Brian McNaught, and we have a guest today. Brian, do you want to introduce your guest? Yeah, yes, our, our, our guest is uh, Mark Turnipseed, who has, who has a book coming out, soon to be published, called My Suicide Race. And um, I thought of Mark immediately when we began doing these uh, sessions, Haley, because we uh, you and I want to talk about the struggle to make the hero's journey and uh, and we want to have people share with us and others their stories and Mark is a great Mark is a really interesting one I'm almost finished with the book but wow. he and I have also talked at length and uh, uh, let's see I'm, let me give you just an overview here's a guy who's 33, he's a personal trainer. And uh, for the first time in his life, he is not only saying he's gay, but he embraces it and sees it as a positive thing in his life. Uh, but it took him a while to get to that point. And, uh, and, and his athleticism and his recovery from drugs and alcohol uh, worked together in the coming out process to um, have him illuminating a lot of light that's shining from his soul, right? Is that a good one, Mark? I think you did pretty well there. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't change it too much. Well, uh, tweak it, tweak it so it's perfect. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I went through um, a very interesting childhood that I, I don't think is too unique to um, a lot of us in the gay community. And that's why I decided to start writing about it. At first, at first I knew that it wasn't unique to the rest of the addiction community. Actually, let me backtrack a little bit. Before I got sober, I thought that it was completely unique to everyone. And I thought that I was the only one who struggled with these things. It was once I tapped into the, a greater community and started to realize that I wasn't alone in my struggles, there I gained um, mastery of not only like myself and my abilities, but I gained mastery in tapping into other people and, and their energy and their focus and their support and their strength where I didn't have it. And so that's where I started to, um, where triathlon really started to speak to me was the more that I tapped into other people and asked for their help, the better I became, the more I looked into their inspiration and followed people on Instagram, for instance, who are successful triathletes, the um, more focus that I had in my life. And I did the same with sobriety. And then, you know, as, when I was going through that type of stuff, I was, I was basically a little child again. I was learning who I was in a lot of different ways. Right. So I started to apply those techniques in, in everything that I was um, facing in sobriety and recovery in triathlon in relationships. So I was married. And so I was learning, trying to learn how to be the best husband that I could be and be the best father that I could be. So I was tapping into fathers. I was tapping into other husbands. I was just trying to communicate with everyone that I could. And then, um, and then a lot of acceptance stuff started to come up and a lot of um, realization started to come up that I would stand there and I would look at it and I would go, okay, I either have to accept this or I have to hide this. You know, and it was, first of all, it was just little preferences. It was like, well, I kind of like this, um, but you know, they don't like it. And I was like, well, I'm 30 years old. Like I got to start doing stuff because I love it, you know? And then it started to evolve and I started to really see myself change. And then I was like, and then my, my readers, they asked me to start writing a book. So that's why I began writing the book about it. And at, towards the end of writing the book, I was also doing a lot of lot of introspection at that time. And I realized that it was time for me to either come out and finally embrace my sexuality that has been there my entire life, or go back and start drinking and drugging and hide it again. So at that point, I had to choose either tap in and 
you know, connect with the gay community and, and just completely immerse myself in that support and that system or run away from it, hide and start drinking again. And the choice was just easy for me. I knew what I had to do because I knew the other direction took me straight to death. So I was almost blessed that I had, I basically had no choice, you know? The choice was very clear. The choice was very clear, yeah. You mentioned, you, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. No, um, no, please. Um, you mentioned that you sort of came to this um, sort of realization that you weren't being yourself. Do you remember perhaps even as a child, you sort of not really being who you are or having to hide yourself? Oh yeah. Sort of, oh yeah. How old do you think you were when you first sort of remember making that decision that I need to hide who I am? My, my very first memories. Um, yeah, I remember uh, just from, from everything, and I talk about it in my book quite a bit, like my preferences, I didn't even know what my favorite animal was. So I remember my friend, we were watching a movie, um, it, was, it was Batman when Danny DeVito is the penguin, and he comes out and my friend Michael goes, oh, penguins are my favorite animal. And instantly I kind of like idolized this, this kid because he was, he was so, um, I don't know, he was charismatic, he was tall, he was talented, he was funny, and I tried to be like him. So in a lot of ways, I was always an actor and mm -hmm. I just picked up other things. And I remember like being a very, very young kid, it always seemed like I was like out here looking at myself and I was putting on a role or a front to be something for what I thought that I needed to be, right? I had never really experienced myself for who I was. What, what message did you get from your folks about um, being who you are? I mean, you, you have an older brother and you have a couple older sisters. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did you get messages at home that uh, encouraged you to be authentic or discouragement? Yeah. You know, there's a conflict there because there was a lot of encouragement and there was a lot of times where my mom and my dad would say, you're so creative, you're so outgoing, you know, you love people. And they would, they would encourage this child to come out, but they also like, but then I pulled it back and I kept reins on it. And that was because of my own fears. Um, that was because of, I knew that I liked little boys, you know, the other little boys in my group. Mm -hmm. I knew that I liked Minnie Mouse more than Mickey Mouse and that that was wrong, that I wasn't, I was told that I wasn't to like that stuff. You know, I was told that I wasn't to like dresses and I, I, I was, you know, my cousins and I had so many boy cousins and they just like put that pressure on me to be that that ball player, that boy who likes boy, uh, boys, boy who likes girls and all that pressure. And so although there was some encouragement, there was also some, um, you know, counter pressure to, to be the, you know, man's man. Mark, do you think uh, in reading your book, I, I, uh, you, you've been around the block a few times. I mean, your, your stories about drugs and alcohol uh, for somebody, I mean, you started early uh, with, with drugs and alcohol and you, you had quite a run. Uh, I mean, it's pretty scary stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and constant, and you went through a lot of rehab uh, and your mom sounds like she's one of your big defenders. She's, you know, she comes across in your book as being somebody you feel very close to emotionally. Uh, how, you, how did you come up? How did you just leave that world? I mean, it, it uh, because that world was the way you survived. Getting the high world. was the way you survived. Yeah, yeah. The world of, um, I, I guess, you know, it, it really stopped working. Um, it stopped being my survival, but you're right. It had become my complete identity. Like mm -hmm. it was everything. Like I have a diploma that I'm looking at over there. That wasn't my identity. You know, my um, sports, I tried 
I tried that on. That didn't work as, as my identity. I tried to be a writer. You know, I was doing a lot of poetry. I was writing a lot of short stories. I didn't take that on as my identity. But when I found drugs and alcohol, like that became my identity. I was selling pot, selling drugs, you know, making a living out of it. And um, the next thing I knew, that's who I was. You know, when I was on the ski mountain and, and people saw me, I still had this, this like, who is Mark with the, it was like a camera always on me. And I was actually on the other side of the camera looking in, you know? And so I would be having conversations with people and the person who I was acting as was the addict. And I guess there, I guess that something happened with the, um, with the conductor of this film that was Mark Turnipseed. This conductor, this producer was like, we have got to show the real Mark, you know, this image is not working anymore. Um, he's just not coming out right anymore. He can't do it anymore. He can't act anymore. And, you know, I was just gasping for air at one point. And I was gasping for air in the sense that I was so desperate that I was about to commit suicide. You know, I was drinking moonshine from sun up to sundown. And then in between, whenever I'd wake up, and then I just, my, my cousin came out and it was, oh, it was such a weird thing, but I remember him, um, us walking down the street and it was springtime and he saw a little flower and he was like, that is so beautiful. And I remember like deep down in my soul being like, how on earth did he see that little flower and say that was beautiful? Like, why can't I see stuff anymore and see stuff as being beautiful? Everyone's against me, I'm against myself. Like, I hate everything and I hate everyone. And he sees this little flower and says that it's beautiful. How old were you when you started um, drugs and alcohol? So when did that become sort of your identity? About 12 years old. Yeah about 12 years old. Yeah. And, you know, it, it really, um, it started before that. It was a lot of, um, I remember contemplating suicide when I was a little, little kid. And then it, then I started asphyxiating myself um, and that would pass me out and I would wake up with a little head buzz. Um, so that stuff started, I mean, probably like eight years old. Do you look back on yourself now and see that as a damaged child or as a child that was doing what the child needed to do to survive? I see, I don't see myself as a damaged child. Um, I see the trauma that I went through just as bad as a car wreck that someone else went through. But I also see it just as bad as someone who was raised in Saudi Arabia or something in a war zone. Like trauma to me is all on an equal plane. It's all mm -hmm. the same. And it all creates a level of damage, I guess you could say. But the, the solution is the problem. The solution of being open and vulnerable and allowing that trauma to come out, that was not there for me. And that I don't, I don't believe I'm a, I was a damaged and broken child. I just believe that I wasn't able to be open and honest with who I was to myself and to other people. One of the things that I uh, so love about working uh, with people, uh, boy, um, you know, I, I love, I, I love other people is that uh, the, the stories when Mark, I look at you and and I, you know, read your book and then I look at you and there's this, oh my, it's, this is the same person, you know, who, you know, here this guy is right now who's centered and happy and, and excited about his present and his future. He's articulate, uh, joyful, proud, and, you know, it's just, just a few pages ago, you know, <laughs> you were in pretty really rough shape yeah and and uh and but you did it and you yeah i mean you had the support of your folks and you know and you, your you know your folks were able to afford sending you to the best rehabs but you know it doesn't really matter whether i mean you know my husband went through 
uh, rehab. <laughs> Initially, when he decided he was going to get sober, he talked about going to Betty Ford. Well, you know, he ended up going to a, a place outside of Boston that was very fancy, and he was dorming with a bunch of young teenagers who were on heroin and he was you know he was a drinker of scotch oh, but <laughs> yeah but you you ended up going to minnesota to to uh the fancy place there but it doesn't really make a difference does it where where you went i don't but, think so you know i think I'm... it's the resolve you had to make a you finally yeah. made the decision that you'd had enough yeah well as you read in the book, I don't know if you've gotten past it, but that's not where it stopped. You know, went to that place. I went to one of the best ones out there. Um, and I came out and I start, I, I fell back into that same cycle. I almost made it out. I really do believe I really came close. Um, because I almost ended up coming out of the closet right after that program. Yeah. I knew, I knew inside that's what, what I needed to do. And so I set myself up in Loveland, Colorado, uh, right after that program. And I was like, you know what, if I can, if I can come out to kind of a group of strangers, like I didn't know anybody in Colorado. I was like, if I can come out here, then I can be gay here for a little bit. And I could start like knowing myself as this person. And then I can move back to Montana where I had a huge network of people and um and i could come out to my family and so i tried i did and um and i got so scared uh right after i did that i that i retreated and mm -hmm. it's largely because i didn't know at that point how to tap into the connection and the support systems of other people i was doing it all alone so i was like i'm gonna come out I'm a gay man, you know, it wasn't, I'm coming out and I'm joining a community, mm -hmm. rather I'm coming out and I'm me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and mm -hmm. me the best. And that just doesn't, it just doesn't work. What do you think the difference was? Cause you mentioned you had that time where you were like almost ready to do it, but then something sort of pulls you back and says, not yet. What do you think was the difference between that window and the window when you actually came out and really started being you or learning to be you? Um, I think that the difference there was a sense of confidence and belief. So I, I learned that, um, that I could believe in the process. I could believe in I, I had faith, honestly, I had faith that if I, that if I took a step, then the community would wrap their arms around me, that they would give me a hug, that I wouldn't be alone. Um, whereas before, I thought that when I took a step in faith, I was jumping out into a dark lake, dark, cold lake, and I was all alone. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a big, big difference. And so, you know, even if, even if it is dark and it is cold, if there's people in there catching you, then, you know, it's wonderful. And that's, that's the way it was. It is, it's scary. It's scary. So it was like jumping with a blindfold on, you know, but I believed that there were people there catching me. Yeah. That's, that's, I'm sorry. And in, in my book on being gay, um, there's, a, I write about, uh, I'm in the pool waiting to catch you, uh, you know, if you're ready to jump. Oh, cool. And <laughs> I, 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 and I talked about, I think one of the things that I want to pick up on with your story, Mark, uh, is how your life was really impacted um, by other people helping you and being there. And it's continuing. I mean, uh, Haley, I don't, I, uh, a friend of mine, Mark, was staying at a guest house down here in Fort Lauderdale, and a friend of mine who owns it, you know, wrote me and said, "I've got this guy who's a writer who's here. Yeah. Um, I think you you guys should meet." And uh, so we connected. You know, he, Mark, you know, assented to it. You have to say yes to this stuff. You, do. you can't be you can't be dragged along. It's a it's a you you have to do it together. Someone's there in the pool saying, "I'll catch you," but you have to jump. You have to be willing to make the effort 
to and say I, yes. Yeah, to. It's always a choice. And even though sometimes it doesn't feel like a choice, yeah. it still takes that enormous courage to make the choice. Well, well, you and I did the same thing. I mean, you know, you and I met uh, Haley and, right. and uh, <laughs> the, you know, we had to say yes to the possibility of having more than one conversation and not knowing where it would lead to. And Mark, the same thing with you. I mean, you know, Mark's got a, um, a photographer friend who's taken an interest in him and he's now, you know, he's got beautiful photographs associated with his, his new book and his, uh, and his work as a blogger and as a, a columnist now of South Florida Gay News and, uh, and modeling. He's modeling now, which is so great. Uh, but it's because people, uh, our family, it's really our family, this human family says, uh, you know, can I help? And if, if we don't, you know, if we stop ourselves from saying, no, no, I can do it on my own. Thank you. I'm fine. If we say, yeah, thanks. That would be great. I'd love that. Uh, yeah. It's more likely that we're going to bloom. Yeah. And I think, you know, with that leap of faith too, you know, you do go through where you lose a lot of friends and you do change the pool that you're swimming in. Um, and you do find these people that are perfectly situated to support you. And I think it's something that I don't really think is spoken about. You know, the, we speak a lot about the fear, the darkness, the isolation of making these massive life changes to shine your light but we don't necessarily talk about these very sort of synchronistic angels that come into your life at the perfect moment to yep. offer that hand to you. Yeah. So, you know, in your story, Mark, were there, you know, one or two, maybe a couple people that you consider sort of your angels that were those synchronistic people that just had their hand there at the perfect time to help you? No, no, I, um, no, I don't. I think it was a more collective type thing. Mm -hmm. And I, while you two were just talking, I was thinking, and I was like, you know, it really reminds me of the Amazon. So it was the largest moving and what a beautiful name for that company, right? It's the largest moving body of water in the entire world moves the most water through it at one time. But the only reason why it can do that and the only reason why it does that is because it also draws all the water from all these different other water sources. It draws that water. And actually the Amazon feeds off of a cloud that's above it. And so that is actually the moving body of water that's underneath it. And I think that's a lot of how, how it works is as a river, we've, we've all got our path as, this, as a river, but we have to tap in, we have to accept the other bodies of water that are around us. You know, we eventually even feed back into them. Absolutely. Um, I, think, you, I, think that was, I think that was it, is I like, I remember watching um, a couple of different movies that really struck with me. So I believe story is huge. Like we've mm -hmm. got to share our mm -hmm. stories. Yeah, um, and I love movies, and so there was um, there was the the Queen movie, the Bohemian Rhapsody movie mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. coming out, you know, and that one just like really struck a chord with me. I saw him come out as bisexual, and his wife was like, "Does this mean that you're gay?" And, mm -hmm. and I was like, "Well, that's exactly what's going on with me. Like, um, I got to do this, and if he mm -hmm. did, I can do it too," you know. Mm -hmm. Then there was mm -hmm. an Elton John movie at the same time that came out. And I was like, Rocket wow, Man. Yeah. Yeah. If they did it, then I can do it. Mm -hmm. And before that, when it came to sobriety, there were um, there was this movie called Flight. I don't know if you guys have seen mm -hmm. Denzel Washington, but mm -hmm. he's a raging alcoholic who's an airplane pilot. And then he gets into recovery. And I remember seeing that and I was like, man, if he can do it, maybe I can too. Mm -hmm. so, there was all this just like it wasn't necessarily little angels of of of, of one person because i don't think we can depend on one person but i do believe we can depend on a community and a collective and an energy of the the love that the the that makes us family like brian was talking about it's a family 
Yeah, I think names may emerge as you get older too, when you reflect on your past. I mean, I would certainly say from just reading your book that your mother um, yeah. is an angel in your life. I know that you want to give uh, equal uh, time and credit to both parents, but your mom is the one who keeps emerging as the one who would sit and talk with you and gently move you forward. And, uh, and honestly, my, my ex-wife, so Jess, uh -huh. she was an absolute angel in my life. And I believe her as my soulmate she came mm -hmm. to my life at the perfect time. I was about to move to Alaska, actually. I was sober. I was still smoking weed, but I was going to move to Alaska. I had just um, bought in a new dog. So I had a big old German shepherd and a big old black lab, and I was going to move to Alaska. So I didn't hurt anybody mm -hmm. else. I was like, I'm done with people. And then she came into my life and like, she slowly started to show, not slowly, actually very abruptly and very quickly started to show the light that was in my life. So I believe that's what angels do is they, they kind of pull the light and they reflect mm -hmm. it back at you, you know? She did that, and oh, my well mom said. always did that to me. Growing up, yeah. what's that? Haley likes what you. Oh, I just said like what you said. So well said. Yeah, repeat it. Re go ahead, oh. repeat it. Can you? That what you angels remember it, Mark? I, I, what angels do is they reflect a light. Yeah, yeah. I believe that a soulmate and an angel comes into your life, and they reflect back the light that you shine out. Uh -huh. Sometimes. We see our own light it's like a flashlight right you shine it or a laser pointer you shine it you can't actually see it until it hits something and that thing reflects it back and that's what my ex-wife did to me is she was right there right here and it was like my light shining and shining right back at me and it wow. scared me honestly yeah. at first um and that that can happen you can get very scared of your own light but um she didn't let me run away either which was oh, What's going on for for Mark now, I think, is that, you know, he wants to make a difference in other people's lives. And you telling your story in your book, My Suicide Race, uh, is a, a lot of people are going to say, just like you talked about Rocket Man and, you know, the uh, other f stories that you saw, they're going to read your story and say that, you know, that's me or, you know, that would be me if I didn't quickly make a change but the fact that you're willing to put it out there and as I was reading it you know Haley and I talked uh, uh, in our, our last conversation about she asked me if I had any regrets and I and I said you know I wish that I hadn't negatively impacted my family as much as I might have as I did when I came out so publicly mm -hmm. and I you know I thought about your folks reading um, your book, Mark, which they haven't yet. And, uh, you know, how it's going to be hard uh, for them to, to, because they love you, and it's going to be hard for them to, you know, relive these things and remember the pain that was caused. But the other, the other side of it is that you, um, all of these experiences give you a credibility that you wouldn't have otherwise had. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, Mark Turnipseed, came out and uh, at age 33, after having a, a, a very unchallenged life, you know, you didn't overcome an awful lot. You came out as gay and you wrote a book about it. You have, there, you have much less um, heft to the message. You know, I say the, the, the messenger is the message. Mm -hmm. So people look at you and they say, I want what he's got, you know, mm -hmm. he's happy. You know, he is, he's self, he's self secure, right? He's, you are in your skin, you know, for the first time uh, in a beautiful way. And you're out there, you know, as a trainer and as a, you're not just a triathlete, you're a, you know, you're a winner, right? And here's a guy who's been through all of this nightmare and, and look what his life is like. I want that. I want, I want that too. So, you know, you're going to be the angel that reflects back on them, you know, that, you know, I'm here for you. I'm in the water waiting to catch you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, once I believe that once you get to that spot, then it's about 
um, stepping into your responsibility, you know, and that is now my responsibility is to be there for other people. And that's why I've chosen to um, take, you know, trials to triathlon and my suicide race and hop into the columnist um, with South Florida Gay News and start my blog, um, My Best Gay Self, because I believe that becomes a conduit for other people to say, to, to be reaching out, you know, um, whereas, you know, my story is, it's now it's done and now it's time for me to help other people live their best gay self well i i'd say your story is far from done yes, you know you kidding. have <laughs> you know you, the bit your start you know what's the story of you being a drunk and an addict yes is done. that's yeah. that's done but that you're, but but you carry with you the that credential of having uh gotten through it and, uh, you know, as Haley, I'm, I'm sure will affirm, in all the years that I've been out there doing this, where I got a lot more out of it than the people, I mean, I, a lot of people will say you helped me, but I got a lot more out of it than they did because I grew in the process. You know? yeah. and, and my light kept getting brighter and brighter and brighter and, and something that I trusted more and more and more and, and was able to say, yeah, look, it is, it exists, but you have the same thing inside yeah. you, you know. It's, I was contemplating a question when I was sort of trying to put together questions for this. Yeah. And the one that stood out to me was, did you grow up or did you grow out or did you grow in? Hmm. Oh, that's a good one. I definitely did not grow up. Um, I believe that I, I almost feel like there's a part of me that like went back and started grow, growing down almost. Uh, if that, I don't know, that's yeah. a really deep thought that I would like to play around with a little bit. It, it kind of reminds me of like a, a tree with a whole bunch of roots down here, you know, like a picture. I can see the picture, but I don't really know how it plays out in words right now. Um, but yes, I believe there's, that, that I feel like I'm kind of getting younger in a sense. Um, and maybe that's, maybe honestly, that is because it's closer to bring it on all back to following my bliss. Right. right. And Fairness. as a child, like that's what you do is you wake up and you follow your bliss. <laughs> you know, you're and, really good at that. And maybe, maybe instead of getting younger, Mark, you're becoming more innocent. Yes. Yeah. You're, you know, you're more able to look at the flower on the sidewalk at the sidewalk and say, "Isn't that beautiful?" Where before you'd walk past it on your way to get a fix. Yes. And you know, now you're able to say, "You know, wait, I'm present. I'm in the moment, and look what I see." Yeah. And there's an in, there's an innocence to that. Yeah. How about you, Brian? Same question to you. Did you grow up? Did you grow out? Did you grow in? All, all, all three. three, all three. Yeah, I grew. You, you know, think I you're grew, done growing? No, heavens, no. That's why you and I are doing this. That's <laughs> why. It, it, no, I have a lot of growing still to do. I, you know, I, I what I want uh, before I die is to feel like I really did um, exhaust every possibility to have this manifestation of the divine shine as bright as it could. Right. I want to polish it and. You know, whatever it takes to uh, to make sure that all facets of it shine. Yeah. I want to do that work between now and when I die. I've done a lot of work and I'm glad about it. Uh, and, you know, I feel confident in my, um, I don't know, wisdom is the right word, but confident in my ability to manage life. But th there's so much more to learn. And Haley, we learn it from other people. Again, going back to this thing about angels and reflecting, there are a lot more angels waiting for me on the path. Mm -hmm. oh. Isn't that exciting? Oh, it's very exciting. Yeah, my angel is excited about dancing with their other <laughs> angel. Yeah. If, you know, if there's not anything else to live for in the day, that is something to live for just to know that there are other angels waiting as you walk out your front door and as you go walk about your day. Yeah. 
I mean, I three of them have been dancing together for the last, you know, 40 minutes. It's been. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. That Mark, was one of the things that I'm excited about, too, is in listening to you talk is that uh, you, you're making yourself available as a speaker. You're going to be very good at that. Uh, you're articulate and you're, you're centered. And uh, uh, so you're going to be a gift to people. I want you to trust that. That's huge coming from you. I appreciate that very much. I know, um, I knew pretty early on that I had a calling to um, go into speaking actually at a very early age, about 18. I knew yeah. that I, I did a public speaking um, little stint actually as a youth minister. And I remember doing one for about 150 people and it almost seemed like i remember the smaller ones and then i did that one with 150 people and it was like even better and there mm -hmm. was something about it that i was like the more people just i mean the better like i just mm -hmm. i loved it you know i didn't get more nervous instead i felt like i was more i mean kind of like what we're talking about just there was more connection and more mm -hmm. you know a bigger body of water and support and, yeah. and love, you know. And I do think that when you tell your story, when you're standing in your power and you're telling your truth, you expand your heart. And as you expand your heart, mm -hmm. you expand that light. It becomes far yeah. more inclusive. That's right. And I think, you know, that's almost like the sweetness of this entire hero's oh. journey is the more that you expand your heart, the more that you expand your light the more life becomes. Mm -hmm. I love that you guys are talking about the hero's journey because I taught my eight-year-old son on our Sunday walk about Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey. And then I taught him how to create a story based off the hero's journey. And we created this beautiful story about this golden eagle that had to fly all the way to Africa to collect this jewel and to fly back. But the eagle after flying back with this jewel that was, it was the jewel of joy and it was going to save the whole world, but mm -hmm. he had to make a sacrifice in doing so because when he got back, he was going to die, mm -hmm. but he ended up choosing to make that sacrifice because mm -hmm. it was the only choice that he had mm -hmm. and my son made it. My son made that whole story and he was like, I'm going to go write it now. Awesome. So that's, a, that's a great story. <laughs> Joseph Campbell would consider it one of the, the many myths, of, you know, one of the, the many faces that uh, of truth. Yeah. Uh, speaking of, do we have a minute, Haley? Uh, we do. Yeah. I was just yeah. going to say, you probably have like three minutes. Okay. So uh, you, you brought up the, the idea of the eagle dying in order to do what it needed to do, that it had to sacrifice itself. One of the things Haley and I um, are also talking about is, you know, what are the sacrifices that you, that people make, that we make in order to have the light shine? Because, you know, yeah. there are sacrifices, there are great joys yeah. uh, and yeah. people can yeah. see the joy in us, but what are the sacrifices that you had to make in order to be authentic? I believe that uh, a lot of people in the LGBTQ community are sacrificing a lot of comfort, um, a lot of safety. So all the safety mm -hmm. nets that I knew, all the comforts that I knew coming home. And I loved my ex-wife. I loved being a family man. Like I loved it um, coming home and being with my little boy. And like, it's just, it was absolutely heartbreaking. Like, yes, I talk about the joy of coming out, but it was absolutely soul-wrenchingly heartbreaking and extremely difficult. And it still is to this day. I go down and my two ex-wives live together and they both have the boys at the in the same house. And I go down and I'm just like, I want to be, I want to be coming home to this. Like I miss, I miss this. I miss you guys, you know, mm -hmm. I love you guys. And so that was a huge sacrifice. That was something mm -hmm. that I knew was going to go away when I did this. Um, there are people who, go ahead, Haley, what? I was just going to say, was it worth it? 
Yes, I, I do believe so. At first, you know, I had no idea where it was going to go. But considering that they both live together 30 minutes away from me, I get to see my boys all the time. Like we're actually, instead of, I think that with me following that, that blissful thought, me going with it, instead of a whole bunch of tragedy happened, just a new way of unity ended up happening, you know? Yeah. And so we've got a lot to build, but I can, I can see us being still a very close family, yeah. closer than we ever would have if I did. And, and also, uh, also Mark, uh, both of your sons and your uh, former wives are able to in their lives talk about this man who was their dad or their husband who had the courage to come out, uh, who made the sacrifice to be himself, who's a role model for them, rather than saying, yeah, my dad was a drunk and an addict and he never came out of the closet and we were all miserable the whole time. Right? That could be the end of the story because a lot of, yeah. kids, tell, a lot of kids tell that story today yeah. you know it's going on in homes today that people are you know so afraid of being themselves that they take it out on everybody else and the children suffer but your kids can say you know yeah yeah you saw my dad's book yeah there was a lot of crazy shit in it but uh you know he can't he he's a hero to me you know he's he really suffered in order to be authentic and he's really happy and he's fun to be around <laughs> yeah and your, your folks have to be really, and your brother have to be really, and your sister is excited about your, the fact that you have become who you are. We'll see. Thanksgiving is our first time all together. So it'll be a beautiful time. Well, you, you're going to, it's going to be, I'm, I, I'm eager to hear about it. I think like sort of that circle back to the eagle, which seems to be sort of the theme today, but you know, it's such the part of why I connected with Brian and sort of why we started this is to really celebrate, you know, that one choice, which does take an enormous amount of courage and enormous leap of faith. There are these sacrifices that sort of cause you to fall to the floor, to your knees without a breath, but then you soar like an eagle and in your soaring, your children are now soaring, your ex-wives are now soaring. And it's just like that right there is why we do it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. sharing the story allows other people to believe, well, if that happened in that story, that can happen in my story too. Absolutely. Uh -huh. It's a good story. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> and it's a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they don't need to make a movie about your life in order for you to have joy in your life, do they, Mark? Not at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it sounds like a headache, but if it comes and I need to, I need to help them do that, then... So be it. That's my next. That'll right. So uh, Mark Turnipseed, his book is My Suicide Race, uh, and you can find him on the internet. Mark, what are the two sites? Two or three sites you have? www.markaturnipseed.com, and then the new blog that I just started five minutes before this, um, and that will be ongoing is www.mybestgayself.com. And we'll include the links to um, all of the information with Mark in the comments below this video. So check them out. Yay. And I'm sure you'll be open to answering anybody's questions if they need to chat with you more or where that goes. We'll see. Definitely. Thank you so much, Mark. Mark, thanks. I hope you, I hope you enjoyed your time doing this. Hope I this did. You, this was awesome. it was, yeah, you were really good. You were terrific. And I think uh, people listening um, are going to get as much out of it as I got out of it. And I know Haley got out of it. Yeah. And so, I, I mean, we're going to be chatting after this anyway. So yeah. <laughs> Mark we, and I decided we have a lot to nerd out on after. <laughs> are we done Thank recording? You. I can't tell. No, we're still recording. So um, well, Haley and I are going to keep continue talking. Oh, and answer okay. the questions from the previous posts. Wait, what? So, so you're gonna you're gonna uh, move you're gonna mosey on, and we're oh. gonna keep talking. Okay. Thank <laughs> you. Right. Thanks, Mark. We'll talk.
Bye. Oh, thank you. Bye. 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 So, Brian. So how was that, Haley? I thought it was awesome. I had so much yeah. fun, and I have so many more questions. So we might have to do a second round. Oh, and I probably talked too much, for you, what, you, and oh. you didn't get your questions. In. Oh, I no. It's just I have so many, and I think you know. It, one of the things that I'm learning too is that the questions actually become their own episodes, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things that I do want to, um, Mark and I were going to nerd out on is this concept that he is, you know, very much into fitness, is a personal trainer. And I've started on my own, sort of doing my own working out again now that my body's strong enough and incorporating, being very present and turning the workout into a meditation. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the things I think that we can always will become its own episode is, you know, how do you integrate meditation into every aspect of your being mm -hmm. at all at all times and every yeah. activity. And I know that you do that, right? You don't necessarily sit down and have a meditation. You meditate throughout the day. I do. I do. I, you know, I think you and you gave me permission to think of it in that way. You know, that walking the dog is a meditation if, in fact, your mind is with the dog and in the moment. Yeah. You know, the, the meditation is really clearing your mind and being present. Absolutely. Right. It it's not a, it's it's not about going to this secret room where all the answers to your questions are are, are, are waiting for you. It, I call it, those working meditations. Yeah. Yeah. Those and those should be, you know, maybe once a week. If you're, it, it's a, it can very quickly become escapism mm -hmm. when you are constantly sitting in a meditation to seek answers. You're skipping the whole point of a meditation. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to say before we go to the question that I popped up from our previous uh, is that it was really fun to. You know, when you try to mentor, and Mark's not been in my life very long, and I don't know how much, you know, how, how often he'll ask me to, you know, for for counsel, but I was proud to see him uh, be so articulate and uh, secure. Uh, and you know, I reading us, go ahead. It please. goes with that whole angel theme, you know, it's like mm. how. It just, you know, he's an amazing light. You're an amazing light. And how these lights just come together without much effort. You know, I didn't go seeking out Mark. You didn't go seeking out Mark. He most mm -hmm. certainly didn't go seeking for us, but we came together. And yeah. I think that's part of the story of faith is knowing that things work out the way they're supposed to for you. It, it, and tr trusting intuition. You know, one yeah. of the things that I'm becoming clearer on you know and it, and it took me to this age uh to to sort of accept it is that those voices that intuition those thoughts they're not random you know that there is a source of wisdom to it and trust it say yes to it keep saying yes to it and and if you if you say yes i i, I really do believe good things will come i I'm delighted that I've been able to be helpful. You know, I've connected Mark with different people that I thought would be useful to him in all the areas of, of, of his life that he's moving forward. I love making those connections. And uh, uh, I think that's part of my hero's you know, I journey. Think of, I think you're yeah. a wonderful connector. Yeah. Um, but I think, you know, focusing on Mark, what is it about Mark that you kind of, that catches your eye, that is that sort of sparkle? Are you able well, to pinpoint it or is it a big thing? Uh, well, for me, uh, young gay men uh, who have come out and, and, and women too, but being male and, mm -hmm. you know, understanding men better, uh, it touches my heart. You know, because they're the ones who have had in the back of my mind this whole journey of how do I make the world a better place for them and their families and their spouses. You know, uh, I, I didn't have time to tell Mark this story, but, you know, the woman I dated through college ended up marrying a fraternity brother of mine who came out, you know, and she thought her life would be over and she lived a very happy, happy life with a 
a different guy and 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 I came back into her life as somebody who helped get her through it. Uh, you know, so and, she, and we're so, and we are soulmates and we're and we're very you know very close, closer probably than we you know ever were. So those relationships aren't over for him and yeah. and his former wives. Yeah, I think for, I mean, I spoke to Mark for the first time yesterday and the thing that was sort of most endearing to him is in his voice, you can feel that energy of that childlike innocence just bursting through and it's yeah. so much fun yeah. to like start hearing him, you know, go through this difficult, you know, scary time. Yeah. You know, he's just, in that place where that voice is just coming through. It's wonderful. He's just he's just been born. You know, he's it been is. born again. He's been born again in the truth of 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 his soul. You know, and the light is now shining, and it's really cool. It's it's, it's going to get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. You know, we have no idea with where he's going to go and what he's going to do. Why well, um, but I that we connected with him because yeah, me too. It's always, you know, I'm not a big fan of like jumping to the future, but I do allow myself to get excited about what is to come and it's going to be awesome. I'm super well, that's excited. That's because you're clairvoyant. <laughs> <laughs> have you noticed that I'm signing my emails to you? I do. I don't <laughs> feel I have the right to call you Claire, you know, to respond to, you know, you're signing <laughs> clairvoyant. I told Claire, I told Haley that it was a great drag name that, you know she's clairvoyant and uh i actually have a friend who uses that name uh facebook post but uh at any rate so what what comment did we get so from a previous we got a question from rick f on the last video that we did and mm -hmm. his question was um pertaining to my story about um how i ran out of water and eventually listened to my intuition my guides who said run the tap drink it and his question was why not um, boil the water and isn't chemistry and microbiology a blessing in itself too so i thought it would just be a good opportunity to address that question and have a quick discussion about it so you know the reason why i purely took it for the tap blessed it and drank is that was the guidance i was getting from my guides mm -hmm. that's what mm -hmm. i needed mm -hmm. to really connect with myself and actually believe in myself mm -hmm. i would absolutely recommend to everybody else combine chemistry microbiology and everything you mm -hmm. have to be safe yeah but, you know in that too is also knowing what is in your highest and best and coming to that faith that you can do it i would have boiled the water myself <laughs> only because i hate dysentery <laughs> <laughs> It's just the worst. I, you know, I highly <laughs> recommend it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, you highly recommend boiling the water. Absolutely, boiling the yeah. water. You know, try try not to run out of water in the first place. Right. You know, it's when we talk about regrets. You know, it could easily be seen. You know, do I regret having to get to that far of the extreme to be able mm -hmm. to believe in myself? Somewhat. You know, it would have been a lot easier if two years ago I could have got it. But you well, know. you, you, but you, you, you keep challenging yourself. You're I on a, do. you're on a trek. You went, you went to Mexico because of the Mayan influence. You wanted to be near that. There was something yeah. in you that felt drawn. With the water thing, it felt like you know it was like picking up a snake, a poisonous snake for you. It was you know. But you would never do. <laughs> well, I'm know. not going to say never because then I have those self challenge, but. You know, right. that is, you know, in my experience, it always has been to really test, not necessarily test myself, but to really understand myself mm -hmm. and to really be able to unwind out of these things in the most complete way. And again, I think that's just my experience, but there are absolutely times where I do have a little wish that it would be a little bit easier, but yeah, at the same I think time, I'm happy with it. You're you're watching the time for us. I hope. Yeah, we got a couple uh, minutes. Okay, so one of the, just real quickly, I think that, um, Rick's question is good in that sometimes people think that uh, if you're spiritual, that you're not of this world, right? Uh, uh, even reading the Tao Te Ching, yeah. um, 
that it talks about other people do this. I alone am, you know, like a fool. Right. Uh, and uh, I think we, the whole idea of incarnation of spirit in flesh is that you are of this world. I am 100% of this world. Yeah. And I, you know, it's one of the most beautiful things that I would not give up, you know, along that hero's journey, there are moments where it's incredibly difficult. There are moments where you just are so exhausted, so afraid um, that you're just like, I can't do this anymore. But mm -hmm. because I'm of this world, because I am a human being, because I live on earth and there is such beauty in that, that's why I keep going. Mm-hmm. And the and their joy and beauty of being it's, human, it's just extraordinary. Oh, when you see what, what other people do for other people, you know, in loving kindness, I just, I'm, I'm so excited that, you know, the papers and, and emails and everything are loaded with negative news, especially now. Yeah. But uh, there are, and positive stories never get any sunlight but there's so much good that goes on in the world. So much good. Yeah. And I am, you know, it is wonderful to start seeing some of those stories really starting to make their way through social media. Of mm -hmm. course, you have to be looking for it. Um, I very much sort of set my um, radar for positive news, good news, funny um, things. And, you know, one of the benefits of the algorithms is that if you watch it, they tend to keep giving you more and more of that. Yeah. Um, so use the algorithms to find the good news, to find the positive news, to find the celebration of humanity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and keep putting into spam stuff that vexes your spirit. I think so. And don't forward yeah. it. Don't, don't read it. Just, you know, don't as soon as you it. see what it is, trash, 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 because you know it's you know which 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 dog are you going to feed you know who you know yeah. which side of yourself are you going to encourage to grow that day yeah i agree oh. and it's it's a beautiful experience and look at mark you know mm -hmm. look at that experience right? look at a person flourishing yeah go choices. to humanity he made the choice yeah he yeah. had support but he made the choice he did he did yeah so huge right, celebration for people. All right, Brian. So we're going to skip next week because it's Thanksgiving. So happy yep. Thanksgiving to you. I happy. know we're going to be in touch. Yes, um, we are. But happy Thanksgiving week. And I hope that we all take a moment to really be thankful for, even though it's been a chaotic year, just those small things that we can be thankful for, the openings that it has created. Well, I'm, I'm thankful for you. And, um, and I will be remembering that at the Thanksgiving dinner. Well, I'm going to be chatting to you, but I'm also very thankful to you. And I'm very excited. Me too. Oh, where we're going. All right. Thank you, everybody. And as usual, leave a comment, a question. And um, just a reminder, I will add all of the information to reach Mark or to um, follow Mark in the comments below. Have a great Thank one. Thank you, Haley. Bye. Bye-bye.